All right, welcome. Welcome to the webinar. We're going to talk about um, midsection weight in cortisol. So the first thing I want to cover is that the weight in your midsection is very, very different than other types of fat around your body. So what we're dealing with is a, it's a type of hormonal fat, and it's coming from a hormone called cortisol. There is another hormone involved, it's called insulin, but we're gonna talk about that in the fourth seminar. So this seminar is all about cortisol and the effects that it creates on your body. I'm gonna be using this reference book, SIBA, Encyclopedia of Endocrinology by Frank Netter, and we're gonna give you a lot of data. Um, it's a very interesting subject, uh, especially if you wanna get rid of your belly fat. So, um, Without further ado, let's uh, get started. I'm going to turn on my screen saver to show you. See if we could. Yeah. Okay, good. So you can pretty much see that. All right. So what I want to talk about is um, what is this cortisol thing, okay? <clears throat> the purpose of cortisol is to adapt, adapt the body to stress for survival purposes. So the purpose of the body is to survive, but your adrenals tend to change the different functions to handle the environmental stress. Okay, that's really what it does. And if you were being chased by a tiger, you could imagine you got pulse rate, blood pressure, blood to your muscles, you have oxygen opening up in your lungs, you have your, your mental acuity is very, very um, aware of everything. You have more blood flow to the heart. Um, all these things are um, stress states. So that would be one of the purposes of cortisol. But I know a lot of people want to get rid of their cortisol because it's creating the belly fat. But really, you need this thing for survival uh, mechanisms. So we don't want it to be too low, and we don't want it to be too high because there's just as many problems with low cholesterol as there are high cholesterol, okay? And if you have people that have symptoms of high cholesterol um, and low cholesterol mixed, um, you know, you try to do research on that and you won't really find too much data. And I have my theories because you have these people that present with, like, for example, belly fat, but they're showing symptoms of a low cortisol, not a high cortisol. Why is that? Like they might have allergies or high blood pressure or they might have inflammation or itching or acid reflux. Well, I think. What's really happening is that cortisol is too high in the beginning, and then it tries to connect to a receptor, like in a different, like all these hormones connect to different body parts, and they they plug into these little tiny receptors, kind of like a, like information goes into your ear. Well, if that cortisol, that stress hormone, is too high, it will cause the receptor to adapt and downgrade, very similar to insulin being resistant because there's too much insulin and your body just adapts and it just won't, it blocks the insulin. So, so I think you have this thing called cortisol resistance. It, it's the only thing that makes sense. So when you have a situation where you have high levels of stress over a period of time, sustained stress, all these receptors downgrade and now we have symptoms of high cortisol and symptoms of low cortisol. Not a good situation. So the cortisol is produced uh, from a gland on top of your kidney. There's two of them, and they're little tiny glands that sit on top of the kidney, right in the central part of your body. And these glands take a beating. They're rugged. Um, they, they basically are going to uh, send messages to the body to handle the amount of stress so it keeps the body alive. Now, the interesting thing about the adrenal is that it has two parts, an inside and an outside. The outside is just all gland tissue, and that's where cortisol is made. But the inside of the gland is all nerve tissue. This is weird, isn't it? So it's part of the nervous system that's called the autonomic nervous system. It's just a new word. Uh, the or you know, it's kind of like the system that works on automatic. You don't have to think about it. They call it autonomic. You can call it automatic, but it's called autonomic nervous system and and that's the part of the nervous system inside the adrenal that um, makes neurotransmitters. Now, what is a neurotransmitter? It's, it's like a hormone that travels through the nervous system. So here we have hormones that travel through the blood 
and they're just communication um, particles that travel through the blood. But then you have communications that travel through the nervous system. So you have two ways that the adrenal can communicate through the nerves and the blood. So it really innervates every single part of your body. Um, there is um, a device that can measure the autonomic nervous system, and you can get clues on what's going on to the inside of the adrenal. And I have that device, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. But I want to explain this autonomic nervous system thing, okay? It's really simple. It, its purpose is to help balance um, the inside of the body, all the different functions, and keep it um, regulated properly. So it adapts to the environment to keep the inside of the body at a, cur a, cur a certain constant state. They call that homeostasis, where your body is trying to balance itself out. So you have like all these things that speed up and turn on, and then you have all these parts of the body that can turn off. And one part of the system, of the autonomic nervous system, is called the sympathetic division. That's that's all the flight or fight. That would be um, like if you're being chased by a tiger, you're getting stressed. Um, all those reactions um, come out of this autonomic nervous system, like it's electrical circuits. They come out of your. If you look at where it's located, it's located in your middle back of the spinal column. So that's where all those wires come out and cause different reactions that turn on. But look at over here. We have the opposite division, the off switch. We call that call that the parasympathetic division. And that turns things off. And look where that comes out of. That comes out of the top of the neck. We're going to come back to this. So just remember the on switches are on the mid back and the off switches in the top of the neck. Okay? But there's one last thing, and I know it's hard to see this, so there, there's a little connection of this on switch to the adrenal gland right here. But if we look over here on the off switches, there is no connection to the adrenal with the off switch. So the adrenal doesn't have an off switch, which explains a lot. It, this explains why people can't turn off. So you have people that are under sustained stress for many years and they get maybe they retire and they or they go on vacation or they go to bed at night and they try to go to sleep and their body will not shut off so the accumulation of stress builds up and it can get stuck in the body and it can cause um, you to be on 24 7 especially with your head it's just going 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 you can't turn off thinking solving problems so the nature of the adrenal is survival so what that's going to do is put you in a survival mode where you're always solving problems. Your attention is on bringing problems up, solving them constantly. And when it gets even, it gets to the extreme where you find that your body gets stuck in that, you, you lose your tolerance for stress. So things start to get to you, especially anything that's the opposite of survival like the opposite of lot being logical, competent, sane, order. So you'll have a low tolerance to any incompetency, out of order situation, slow. You just won't have the patience. And that's one of the symptoms that, of adrenal overload because the person can feel subjectively that they're very highly critical. And that's not their personality. That's just the adrenals affecting their personality. I mean, how many relationships are affected by having the adrenal overload where the person just is just like back and forth, back and forth, no patience? I mean, it can get so bad. You're in a room and the clock is ticking and you just can't stand that. Tick, tick, tick. I mean, it's like they have to go to sleep with, a, with the TV white noise to kind of filter out stuff. But. They're multitaskers, they're thinking all the time. Um, and so that's one of the problems with the adrenal is that it can create a cognitive effect uh, that is very undesirable. Okay, so let's, um, let's go back to the slides. I want to show you this right here.
All right. <clears throat> so, so does that make sense? We have the autonomic nervous system. We have the, the part of the autonomic nervous system that turns things on. It's called sympathetic. And then you have the other part that down. They call that rest and digest. It's called the parasympathetic set. And it's, there is no parasympathetic connection to that adrenal. So there is no off switch. Fascinating. Okay, so let's talk about can the adrenal glands, or let's just say this, can we measure a part of the adrenal gland, generally speaking, to see what's going on? Yes, you can. There's a technology out there called heart rate variability. And I don't want to get into the tech, uh, the technical aspects of this, but it's basically a fancy test that measures the that part of the nervous system, and it measures two things. One is stress states, and it measures accumulative stress, and it also measures recovery or that that turn off switch. So it measures the on switch and the off switch. Okay. Now the on switch or the the flight or fight is this long dot right here and it should be normally straight up and down plumb not too stress not too burnt out and then the off switch or the recovery mechanism should always be twice as high because you need a buffer if you are being chased by a tiger in the wilderness you need some reserve to get away you can't just be right on the edge because or else you would stand up and pass out so you need a good nice robust recovery mechanism to handle stress now let's show you something when you have this tall dial let's say the tall dial is too high remember it should be straight up and down this person is pretty jacked up on the inside of their body and they're revved up um they're stressed out but look at this person might not feel too bad because their recovery dial is so high that's the um the all the brake pads so they're all gas pedal but they have good brakes to handle it. So this person is in a state of, um, they're not burnt out, but they're burning out. So it's just a matter of time before it burns out, okay? So they're gonna have problems sleeping and excessive thinking, that type of thing. Now, if we get down over here, we have that not too bad with the tall dial, okay? So they're maybe in a little bit of flight or fight, but look at this recovery, it's way, way down here. So this person is really not doing good because recovery is necessary for metabolism, for sleep, for handling stress, and for the heart to handle exercise. So this person should not be exercising any high intensity because they're going to feel dizzy. They might have uh, stress on the heart. Uh, it'll take them a long time to recover. And there's... This recovery is an active recovery, so it's going to prevent them from getting into the deep sleep. They're going to be very um, not very tolerant to stress. So I just wanted to kind of show you what these two mean because you can kind of visualize not just subjectively feeling stress, but you can see the stress, the accumulated stress. So both of these people here, if you go into their history, I always ask two vital questions that you should always focus on if you have any problems and you want to solve your problem is find out like when did you start having this problem when did you start gaining weight in the midsection what happened just before that there will always always be something that triggered it and you know sometimes you ask the doctor and they'll go oh no um you know i know you started having projectile vomiting when i gave you those medications but that couldn't be it i mean it's the only obvious thing you took the medication, you vomited, okay? So this is like the obvious thing. What happened right before it, and you're going to get clues as to your adrenal stress, your belly fat. Um, I mean, I had one lady, um, and she had this itching in her body, almost like a yeast infection. And I said, when did you get that? She told me it was like, um, I think it was like three weeks ago. I said, what did you do just before that? And she just, she couldn't think of anything. And so I just told her, I just started asking her, I said, well, did you have antibiotics? She goes, no. I said, did you take any nutritional yeast? She goes, oh my gosh, yes, I did. I said, ding, ding, ding. So because sometimes when you get the wrong type of nutritional yeast, 
um, which is a supplement for people, um, it can create some yeast issues if you take too much, okay? So anyway, that's just an example of, of you know, finding out what the cause of something is, okay? So now the next thing we're going to talk about is <clears throat> stress. Um, stress is a little bit different for a lot of people. Um, but typically, people get stressed out from physical stress, injury, surgery, uh, change of environment, change of diet, um, being in a bad marriage, being in a ba uh, having a bad job. Um, but out of all the stresses that I, that I observe people go through, I think the biggest thing that I see is stress with other people. Wouldn't you agree? So we can pretty much just take people and to put them in two boxes. Number one, the people that bring you up. And number two, the people that bring you down. Okay. Um, the, the people that you're around and they stress you out. Um, and you're connected to them, you're going to have to either improve the situation or not be around them because all day long, I'm constantly trying to help people change their environment. And it just boils down to being in this, this situation where they're around this person who is, it could even be a family member, but what's happening is that this family member is being so destructive that it's killing this person but they don't want to not be around them because they're family and blah 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 so i want to just explain one personality type that i think you could identify with it's called the passive aggressive this is the person that told you they stood up for you but they actually ruined your reputation they they will say to you uh a, like a nice comment like um hey i like your hair was it did you get it at cheap cuts you know, your haircut, a cheap, really? Who would ever say that? Or that's a nice jacket. Was that on sale? Like it's just a little bit of a kind of a destructive comment. So they're very degrading, but they're doing it in a nice way. <laughs> They'll smile at you as they say, are you feeling okay? You look a little bit tired. I had this person say to me once, um, hey, congratulations, you graduated from chiropractic college. Hey, why didn't you want to become a real doctor? So that's just interesting. It's just something that you probably wouldn't say, but um, it's very destructive. I, I was in a seminar one day and had all these people sitting there and this lady raises her hand and she just smiles at me and she says, Dr. Berg, um, we love you, but how do we know that you're not a real quack? I'm like, what? That is so rude. Um, first of all, how do we? Like, who's we? We is you. Everyone wants to be there. So sometimes people um, are very, very um, destructive covertly. And those are the people that you need to avoid like the plague. Um, they will mess with your adrenals, guaranteed. Okay. Now, I talked a little bit about tolerance for stress, but as the adrenal glands get weaker and weaker, you lose your patience, you lose your tolerance, you fly off the handle easily. You don't tolerate slow people on the freeway. You don't tolerate um, incompetent people that make mistakes. You walk in a room, you'll find that thing that's just not quite <clears throat> right. Your, your, your tension goes on it uh, more so because your body, your mind is fixated on problems 24 7 so even if you had a wonderful day your attention will go to that one thing that wasn't quite right so it's hard to be happy because your attention is just so stuck in these issues so that's just an example of an adrenal issue and if we measure that on that graph that dial <clears throat> the low dial would be all the way to the left okay so there's a lot of effects of cortisol that I want to talk about because, um, I mean, this virtually blows my mind how many issues can occur from the adrenal. Um, so I'm going to read from you this uh, in this book called SIBA. It's an encyclopedia 
on endocrine system, medical illustrations by Frank Netters and MD. This is in the, pretty much all the medical uh, schools. Um, but check, it can cause belly fat, diabetes, muscle atrophy. In fact, let me just show you a page, page 84, right in this book. And I'm just going to, I have my book. It's hard to read this, but I will send you the slides. Um, but here's the thing. You have a problem with high cholesterol. <clears throat> the adrenals are very destructive on protein, so it'll break down your muscle protein, your collagen, and it'll turn that into fat. You can pretty much see it on this graph. You see this lady with these skinnier legs and the big belly? Well, the adrenals will start taking proteins from the thigh muscle and converting them into sugar and then fat into the belly because the body is in the state where it thinks it's starving. Regardless of the all-you-can-eat buffet down the street, it just thinks it's starving. And then after it depletes this, it'll go after the butt muscles and turn that into belly. It's very destructive. So proteins, collagen, joints fall apart, high cholesterol. Cholesterol will go high because cholesterol is needed to build adrenal hormones. Low vitamin D levels, wow. Um, immune system. The white blood cell, which protects you against infections, are all controlled by the adrenal. That's why they give adrenal hormones in the form of cortisone or hydrocortisone or steroids or prednisone for pretty much all really bad infections. So if you look at what conditions someone would take prednisone or a steroid or cortisol for, you can get an idea of the function of cortisol. It's an anti-inflammatory. They give it to allergies, heart conditions, coronary problems, immune problems, and the big one, autoimmune problems. We'll get into that in a little bit, but um, on this page in the bottom, it talks about viruses coming out of remission with, it, with high levels of cortisol. I mean, it's... It just blows my mind how many issues that people have, and it's really they're treating all these separately. They're not going after the root issue. Um, yeah, allergies, asthma, inflammation, arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, excessive brain activity, um, acid reflux, diabetes, hypoglycemia. Other than that, it won't. It doesn't affect anything. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, poor wound healing, buffalo hump in the back, round face, red uh, cheeks, that's rosacea, moon face, belly fat, high blood pressure, insomnia, sleep apnea. Oh my gosh, it goes on and on and on, okay? So those are all the symptoms of the adrenal, craving for salt, chocolate, and even sugar. So um, the adrenal gland has a lot of effects and um, a lot of people have a few of the effects, but not all of them. It's because it starts off small and it might gradually get more and more and more. So when you go to the doctor, <clears throat> they rarely check for cortisol. And the problem is that if you get one test that measures your cortisol, it doesn't really do you any good because cortisol works on a circadian wave through the day and night. You'd really, to measure this correctly, you'd have to measure it every four hours throughout a 24-hour cycle to get a better impression. And I believe that saliva is one of the a good ways to do that. But here's the thing. when they, Even if you test positive, you would have to have the majority of these symptoms before someone does something about it, um, like the doctor. And they only use a drug on a compassionate basis, so really they don't have a solution. Okay. So now that's in this book right here. Uh, but there's some other things that I want to show you because there's also a condition called, it's a low adrenal. I showed you all the symptoms for high adrenal. Remember, you could be a mix. But check this out. This person loses weight. They get atrophied. They shrink. And they get tanned. Lose weight and you get tanned. Okay? You might like that, right? But it's a very unhealthy state. And you probably hear people that go through stress and lose weight. That's not healthy. But this person has um, vertiligo. That's an adrenal. Michael Jackson, right? Losing the pigment 
um, their immune system is completely destroyed and they have a lot of inflammation. John F. Kennedy had this condition called Addison's, which is low adrenal, and they have to be injected by with adrenal hormones. So a lot of autoimmune issues. So the adrenals can also affect um, bruising um, and male pattern baldness, facial hair, I mean, acne. I mean, think about how many people have these conditions. And so it's, it's huge. So we have this one gland that affects so many issues and it's basically triggered by stress. So stress is a huge culprit in um, destroying our lives and our health. And especially with weight loss, um, a lot of people are on a diet and exercise. Well, you can get some changes with diet and exercise, but there's some other things that you need to know about to help your belly fat that go beyond diet and exercise that very few people are talking about. We'll get into that. All right, so I covered the effects of cortisol. Okay, stress accumulates. Pregnancy, hysterectomy, tonsillectomy, infections. See, when you were a kid, um, you may had your tonsils out. You had respiratory infections. You had sore throats. Um, and now you're an adult, and you might think, well, that's probably, it's not an issue that was in the past. All that stuff does affect your adrenals. It's like you have this accumulative number of applications on your desktop computer, like right here. All these applications on your desktop can slow down the computer. It's the exact same thing with the adrenal. It's the accumulation of stress and uh, physical, mental, emotional. <clears throat> the people that I talk to that have never really experienced that much stress they always can lose weight easily, and they don't have a lot of health problems. It's, it's an interesting connection. So um, personally, I've had probably more injuries and infections than any patient that ever came to my office. My whole life, I had sore throats, tonsil issues, lung issues, digestive issues, sleep issues, uh, arthritis, inflammation chronic fatigue issues. Uh, I've had fractures of my leg, my arm, my elbow. Um, I've had falls on the head, whiplashes, motorcycle accidents, um, wrestling injuries and fractures, fractured my neck several times. So um, all that stress accumulates and that's what drove me to figuring out some of this stuff because I personally had a lot of these problems. Um, okay, so visceral fat. Um, visceral fat is a different type of fat. It's the fat around the organs. It's the fat around the liver. It's not superficial, and it can be measured, and that's coming from cortisol. So, so um, the question is, how do you lower cortisol? You don't want to necessarily, you want to balance cortisol by lowering the um, the, um, the impression that it left on the body. Cortisol, well, let me just get into that in a second. I wanted to touch on this next slide here first, and then I'll get into what to do about it. Auto, I want to talk about autoimmune conditions. Um, a lot of people have them, lupus, rheumatoid, MS, um, you name it. There's so many autoimmune conditions. And uh, there's a lot of theories out there and what causes them. Um, well, I'm going to tell you right now my theory on this um, is that I think that um, <clears throat> autoimmune diseases um, are related to the adrenal. And the reason I say that is because you can take any autoimmune case, 100% of them, and ask them when did it start and what happened just before that. And there is always some stress event that occurred right before the autoimmune condition whether a loss of a loved one, which, by the way, losses will affect the adrenal a thousand times more deadly than physical trauma, divorce, loss of a loved one, multiple losses. I mean, the problem is everyone is around people, that eventually they're going to lose all these people. So eventually they're going to have adrenal issues. It's just a matter of time. I've been very lucky in my family. Very few people have died. One person very close to me, my grandmother, but that's about it. 
But the point is that autoimmune cases always have this huge stress, usually a loss right before it. So that means that the adrenal gland is involved. Okay. So <clears throat> what I want to show you next is um, there's some data um, that I'm going to share with you. And this data is uh, has to do with um, another interesting finding with autoimmune cases. Okay, and this is the research has been been done on um, this guy by the name of Marshall, called the Marshall Protocol. And here's the here's the simplicity of it. He found that, um, or not, he just he just observed this, and he's connecting the dots. He found that um, the vitamin D is heavily um, influenced with autoimmune and, and immunity. So in other words, vitamin D is uh, intimately connected with your immune system. And he found that the vitamin D receptor is inside the cell. And the difference between vitamin D and other vitamins is it's a fat soluble vitamin that in, can go inside the cell more than a water soluble vitamin. So it goes deep down into uh, the DNA of a cell. And What's fascinating is that he found that the receptor for vitamin D, um, called the vitamin D receptor, VDR, gets blocked, and then you can't absorb vitamin D anymore, okay? And then the person has this associated finding with um, <clears throat> autoimmune, and this is what he does, he's, he gives someone a vitamin D receptor, VDR, Analog. Here's another word. I want to explain what it means. I'll define it. An analog is something that kind of mimics something, so it acts like something. So a, a VDR analog would be something that could help open up the receptor. So it can it can help mimic um, and open up the receptor. Okay. So what he found is that there's a medication called Benicar, which is high blood pressure medication, that is a um, it's it's a some type of remedy that helps reverse the um, receptor problem, the the block receptor, okay, and allowing vitamin D to go in there and helping the autoimmune system. And I don't agree with this because it's a drug. And he also uses heavy duty antibiotics for a long period of time. I think it's for like a year. <laughs> so it's not from from my viewpoint, it's not a good solution, but. What's interesting is the vitamin D um, does get blocked. So now let's take that into this book right here, Frank Netter, page 84, and right here, cortisol counters vitamin D levels. It blocks vitamin D. I don't know if you can see that. So in other words, The question is, why does vitamin D get blocked in the first place? Marshall talks that it's a microbe that does it, and that's totally could be true. But what about the adrenal? Because it's a stress. The adrenal is the thing that triggers the whole event because it's a stress event. Now, if you do a, a search on the vitamin D receptor analogs, and I know I'm giving you some words here, so just hang it, hang tight. There is another thing that I think is very natural. Um, that um, can act to help open up this vitamin D receptor. And uh, I, I stumbled on it. And you can use bile salts. Yeah, from the gallbladder. Purified bile salts do help open up that vitamin D so you can absorb more vitamin D at the receptor level, which is fascinating because that's where they need to be doing research, not Benicar, because it's there's too many side effects. And also, but, uh, bile helps you break down the fat side of vitamin, vitamin D, helping you your immune system. So I just found that kind of an interesting connection, and I wanted to bring that up. If there's anyone listening that has autoimmune, you should research using bile in your diet and um, vitamin D together to see if that can help you. On, in addition to also looking at um, what you can do to improve the adrenal function overall. I just want to make, make a disclaimer here that I'm not claiming to cure any adrenal diseases, okay? I'm not here to do that. Um, all I'm here to do is give you the information so you can do research and you can know where to focus on 
and get with your doctor to help yourself, okay? So that's my disclaimer. All right, so check this out. You guys heard of Roundup, Roundup Ready? Monsanto GMO, right? It's a herbicide that they used on GMO to be able to, it's because GMO is like, they made it resistant to Roundup Ready, an herbicide. So it's genetically modified food. Well, I just found in, in this uh, toxicology reports that there's Roundup Ready creates a major problem to the adrenal gland. Yeah, interesting. It disrupts the endocrine system of the adrenal gland in male rats. Of course, I don't know. It could affect humans too. What do you think? But I just want to bring that up because in this stuff came out in 1996, which is date coincidence to a lot of people getting sick shortly after that. So I'm curious. This could be a huge connection to a lot of adrenal issues from people consuming genetically modified food without even knowing it. And that would be um, uh, in all the soy and the corn, but also in the animal products that eat the soy and the corn, which is huge. It's all over the place. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some tips to reduce stress. All right? Because what we want to do is we want to you know, not take a, just a pill to lower cortisol. We want to look at the whole body. We want to find out what to eat, of course. We want to find some way to deal with this issue. And so there's a couple things that you can do overall because, yes, we want to correct the problem, but we also want to correct um, your environment. And so it doesn't keep going and on and on and on. Um, so there are techniques that you can extract stress from the body. I'll cover a few. Um, even injuries. But what happens with the adrenal is that it, it creates a lot of situations where you're in your head a lot. You're thinking, you're analyzing. Um, I mean, here you are at work in front of a computer. Right now you're watching a computer and then you go to bed, but there's not a lot of space going on. So with stress, what stress does is it kind of, it's, it collapses your space. And that's why when you're stressed, you might even say, I need some space because you don't have space. <clears throat> so one of the remedies for stress is to get space. So how do you get space? Go outside, go hiking, go in a park, get lots of space, go to the beach. All this is very therapeutic. You might say it's the salt water, you might say it's the sun, it's the space that you need. And so going to a gym behind a treadmill, looking at the computer screen is very, very bad. Um, I'm not against meditation, but if you're sitting there meditating, focusing on something, and maybe your meditation is something different, but that's how I, some people that do it told me, but, and, and it works for them. But the point is that if you were to extrovert your body and not necessarily focus on anything, but just observe things in your environment, you know, temperature, sight, sounds, without analyzing everything, that would be very therapeutic if you did that every single day. Because all day long you're solving problems with your work, we have to reverse that and extrovert your body for your stress, okay? So that's one thing with space. Another thing, let's go back to the screen share here. More sleep. Now, some people have a problem sleeping. I had a problem sleeping really bad. And so one of the common remedies for um, helping with the adrenal and stress is to get more sleep. So now let's talk about sleep. How do you fix sleep? First of all, sleep, there's several different causes to sleep problems. You can have hot flashes, for example. You can have problems with stress that you're thinking and you can't wind down easily, your night owl. You have a problem where you sleep for two hours and wake up at two or three in the morning and you're laying there bright awake, yet during the day at two or three, you're completely exhausted, okay, because your circadian waves, your rhythms are off. So what I like to do is I like to make sure the eating is right so there's nothing interfering. Um, I also recommend doing various treatments, either go to a doctor that I train, come to my office, or 
if you're not available, do it to do a version of do it yourself version of this technique, which is an acupressure technique. And I'm going to show you a couple techniques. Um, I I do acupressure on myself every night before to sleep. My practitioners work on me as well. Uh, of course, all the injuries that I've had, right? But there's a tool that I want to show you. A lot of you um, watching this have this tool already. It's um, an acupressure tool. It has three widths, so it's good for different body shapes. But I use the widest one, and we work right back here. So now what I'm going to show you is sleep that will really blow you away, okay? Let me see if I could find the image here. Okay. What I wanted to show you is that, you remember when we showed you at the beginning of the webinar, um, the sympathetics, the, the on switch, and then the parasympathetic the off switch? And the off switch basically is in the brain stem up here in the top of the nerves, in the top of the, the neck right here. Well, the name of that nerve is called the vagus nerve, okay? That's the name of it. And it comes from the Latin word, which means wandering, because it travels all the way up to your um up to your neck down to your um your organs and let me just quickly just go back over that because I, I this is important i want to show you something yeah right here you see this nerve coming out it goes all the way to the face the lungs the heart the stomach the pancreas the liver the intestines it goes all into these organs right here right so check this out Where am I here? Okay, so <clears throat> there is a there's a treatment nowadays that's called that actually that stimulates the vagus nerve, and uh, it's called the vagus nerve stimulation. And I just want to let you know, I disagree with this treatment, and I'll tell you why, because it's sending impulses into this nerve, and there's a lot of side effects if you. If you use this technique, there's a much easier way to stimulate the nerve without having to send electricity, some shock wave through your nervous system. But look at the FDA even approved it for, for um, depression and epilepsy, but it's also used for anxiety and stress and Alzheimer's and migraines and fibromyalgia and even obesity. Why would it be used for obesity? Because the vagus nerve is the turn off switch it relaxes the body, it increases recovery, and it helps lower cortisol, okay? Tinnitus, it's ringing the ears. Look at this, atrial fibrillation, autism, bulimia, chronic heart failure, hiccups, coronary heart disease. Why would it be used for all these things? Because it can, it can, organs. it's like you have this circuit that connects to the organs. So, they're using electrical stimulation to this, but here's what I use. Let me show you what you can do. And I don't even think a lot of people realize what this is doing when you do this technique. Um, they built entire chiropractic techniques around adjusting the first cervical vertebra in your neck, okay, called the hole in one, the atlas. Um, why? Because it creates such effects on the rest of the body with relaxation. So the technique I develop, I use my hands and I get in there. So, but a lot of times if I'm in a place where there's no one to work on me, that sucks. So I built this after my hand. I mean, modeled after my hand. It's the exact width of my hand. But look at how big my thumbs are, right? I have huge thumbs, and that's why I made this really thick. So what I do is you put this in the back of your couch or a tall back chair and you kick back your feet and you just lean back and you let this thing connect right underneath your skull and you let gravity pull you back and you can push your head back and relax. Guarantee if you did that for two minutes, you'd be probably ready for bed. Why? Because it stimulates the vagus nerve naturally. It relaxes all the neck muscles. It helps the nervous system, which is the off switch. This is turning on the off switch, which will then turn off the cortisol because 
it will affect that flight or fight mechanism. So, so yes, there are techniques out there to turn off the on switch, but this is like triggering the off switch. Okay, so we do both. We work on both. Now, the other technique, I can't really do it here because I do it in my bed, and I'll show you to create a vi video on that, but you use this on your back, that middle back part, like from your upper back down to lower part, you can use this because you would use this part right here to hit all the way down your spine, one, and you just let gravity, and you lay back on your bed, and you work on that. That's what I do every single night, and I go to sleep right after that. Um, my wife's like, are you always going to be using that thing? Why don't you massage my back, right? But I have to do my back first, right? So that is something that a lot of you already have. But if you don't have it, I highly recommend you get one. Um, okay. So now uh, let me go back to my slides here. Okay. So, so I just wanted to show you that there is a vagus nerve stimulation thing. I don't agree with it, but that's what they're doing now. Um, but there's all these different techniques that you can do. You can work on the adrenal glands. You can work on the mid-back. You can work on the tissues in the front. These are all the points that I use to extract stress from the body. Okay? And what am I doing is I'm using this to put myself in the delta wave sleep. So <clears throat> acupressure is a really good way to help someone sleep, to get better sleep, to get deeper sleep, and turn the body off. So when you go to bed, every part of your body can finally turn off okay so we talked about space we talked about sleep let's talk about being too serious okay there's a word i want to teach you it's a french word which means insouciant this means carefree non-serious untroubled unworried okay let me just, so I can talk to you about this. The adrenal cases put you in a state where you're solving problems 24 days. You get really, really serious. Anytime you're really serious, you increase stress on your body. A good way to reduce that would be to be very insouciant. You, in fact, I would write that on some paper and put it on your refrigerator and be very carefree about things. Go through the day and just be light, joking, but not degrading, but just very, very playful. Um, that viewpoint and attitude is the best viewpoint to reduce stress. The people that have the hardest time with losing weight are the most serious people. They're like counting their calories and they're stressed out and they're like weighing themselves. I had one lady comes in and she's freaking out because she's not losing weight and she's trying everything, nothing's working. And I can see she's very serious about everything. So I said, this is, this is what I want you to do. I want you to promise me for one week. And I start, I explain the definition of insouciancy, carefree. I want you to do this for one freaking week, okay? I want you to stop being so darn serious. I want you to stop weighing yourself. I want you to have fun. I want you not to care about your weight. Just do the eating plan. Do the things I say. And don't worry about it 24-7. Why? Because all that worry is triggering the adrenals. Adrenals think way too much. They're in their head. And all that just stirs up the adrenal 24-7. So again, we have to extract the stress. We have to have the attitude of being insouciant and carefree. Uh, do something. Get involved in some games. Games is a very great way to be insouciant and playful. Don't watch the news. Before bed, watch many. Okay, something like that. So insouciant is a, a playful, caring, non uh, I mean carefree way to go about life. The, the people that I know that are the most successful are the most insouciant. Okay? So that's number three. Okay, now we're gonna talk about potassium. There's another interesting little point here. All right, so got my little book right here, page 84. <clears throat> As you know, I this is like a hobby for me. I love endocrinology. That's all I study 24-7, weekends. I'm into it. My wife's like, aren't you interested in any other books? I'm like, no. She goes, well, I'm glad you're interested in it because I don't think anyone else is. 
But um, there is one thing on this page that talks about potassium deficiencies. So with adrenal, you lose potassium. Not to mention you probably don't get enough from your diet because if you watch any of my videos, you, you require 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. 4,700. One banana is 300. You'd need 12 bananas or 11 bananas. So here's the point that I'm trying to make. Potassium is a physiological tranquilizer. It's a calming thing of the nervous system. Without potassium, your nervous system can't calm down and chill out. It's a thing that lowers the pulse rate and even blood pressure. If you're deficient in potassium, your pulse rate goes up. Try to sleep with your pulse rate in the 90s. It doesn't work. So it will help calm you down. So what food is high in potassium? Vegetables. So there we can work back to the big salad. You need a lot of potassium to calm those adrenals down. So you need huge salads twice a day, lunch and dinner. No fail. Just stick it in there. See, vegetables don't just have potassium. They have the vitamin C complex that you need. See, most of the vitamin C in your body is stored in the adrenals. And uh, most of the vitamin C that people buy is synthetic. So you, an ascorbic acid in high dosages will create a vitamin C deficiency because it's synthetic and it de depletes you of the good parts of the vitamin C complex. So what, what you need to get is a food-based vitamin C or just the food itself. If you eat that much vegetable, like maybe huge, two huge salads a day or plates of vegetable before you have the protein, you will have all the vitamin C that you need. Um, Another thing that vitamin C deficiencies will, sh will um, show up is uh, pink bleeding gums, loss of collagen. So we talked about in the um, seminar on nutrient absorption, we talked about having an acid stomach to digest collagen, but now you need vitamin C to build collagen. Um, so that's in the vegetable family. Okay, so we need the potassium and we need the vitamin C. Um, Potassium is in avocados. So one avocado is 800. So I have like probably half an avocado every other day. But I do a lot of salads. Uh, I go to the farmer's market and I get my lettuce. And I always cut red cabbage. And I stick a little kale in there. I like the dinosaur kale. And I will do that every single day. If I don't do that, I find my sleep is not as good as it should be. Okay. Now, when you eat a lot of protein, that stimulates your body, but you need the vegetables to counter the body, counter that, that revved up um, protein uh, action. All right. So now, the next thing we're going to talk about is B1. Okay. So B1, vitamin B1 is the magical vitamin for stress but there's a couple things you need to know about it number one the more stress that you go through the more b1 that you burn up b1 is necessary for um your nervous system if you're very deficient in vitamin b1 um, you will have a condition called berry berry and i'm just typing this up right now so you can, so I, I can just show you the actual name of this of this condition that affects the psyche. Let me see. Yeah, <clears throat> look at this. When you're when you're deficient berry berry, you get um, um, this condition where you have neurological and psychiatric symptoms. Yeah, depression, severe anxiety doom and gloom wow yeah so if you ever want to see all the symptoms you can look up uh, berry berry but um you can look that up later but here's the thing b1 most of the time is made synthetically so you have to find a natural b1 now it's not um, it's very expensive to make um i like to get my b1 
um, in nutritional yeast. The problem is most nutritional yeast is made synthetically. It's enriched synthetically with B1. So you need to get an enriched yeast that's not, has this enriched with synthetics. And um, there is one product that I do have. It's the adrenal day formula. Okay. And I have in here a natural B1, but I also have the entire vitamin C complex that the adrenal needs and all the minerals that the adrenal needs and the several herbal things that the adrenal needs. But this is interesting because when you take this within, I would say about <clears throat> five minutes, maybe less, you're going to feel like just the stress just kind of goes right away. This is a great thing to take if you have that nervous tension buildup that you're going to explode. If you have people around you that have that, just slip one of those in their coffee and they'll just be so nice to you. So the people that are hypercritical, the people that are, have low tolerance to stress, take three of these, take nine of these a day. But I think three would be fine spread out through the day, but take it as needed. And you'll feel a change because it affects the nervous system. It pulls stress out. You, you know, it's weird. It's like sometimes when I, when I don't take it for like a week, I'll feel like a little buildup of stress and then I'll just take it because I, I, I run my body and I, I do all sorts of exercise, stressful things. And so I'm burn up B1 all the time. But B1 naturally comes from wheat, grain, but not the type of grain that you get from the grocery store. If you were to grind your grain and eat the grain right away, it might be a problem for your weight, but it has all the B complexes, B1. So I don't eat grains. So I need to get my grains from something. So the adrenal day formula is the stress formula for the adrenal. It has the B1 in there. It has all the B complex. And it comes from a type of nutritional yeast that's unfortified. And it doesn't have the, the yeast effect that will cause the yeast infection. So it's a really good stress-relieving product that helps uh, with stress and energy and focus. And um, also nightmares. When you're deficient in B1, you get nightmares and heavy, vivid dreaming. So that would be an indication that you need that as well. Okay. So B1 is very, very necessary for any type of stress events or stress symptoms or um, any psychiatric problem, and they should be giving B1. Um, you know, they label people with ADD and attention deficit disorder and schizophrenia and bipolar. It's just, it's just a lot of it's B1 deficiency and adrenal stress. That's what it is, okay? Um, now. There's the one that I use for sleep, and I use this. I developed this formula for myself. I take one before bed. Sometimes I'll take two, rarely, but you just need one before bed. It's a adrenal night formula. This formula has been changed many, many times, and I perfected it to the point where you get the optimum wonderful sleep, where you just turn off, go to sleep for seven hours, and you wake up, feel refreshed, you don't feel groggy, but it really helps people sleep. It's a very popular thing. So I take one of these, and I take three of these through the day. It's a great combination if you want to find something that helps you naturally sleep. But this is not treating cortisol. This is supporting a healthy adrenal. And it helps you sleep through the whole night so you can rejuvenate. So the, the effects that you get from the sleep help rejuvenate cortisol. But this helps you sleep. Okay? So that's the combination that I would recommend. All right, so now let me go back to this for a second. All right. So there's a book that comes with this massage tool that shows you all of the different techniques um, that you can use. But it also, if you even go to this, uh, my uh, website, drberg.com forward slash massage hyphen tool hyphen manual. Um, you can watch videos on how to do the technique. You need the device, but at least you could see the, the, the technique and you could probably do a few of them to help yourself um, tonight when you go to sleep or today. Um, okay, so <clears throat> here's some different things. We talked about the turnoff switch, the vagus nerve. Now we're going to talk about <clears throat> your eating plan. Now, in previous seminars, I've talked about ketosis. Um, ketosis is your body's burning fat. But the problem is, if you're an adrenal type, 
there's some problems with ketosis because the problem with the adrenal is that adrenal puts your body in a state of um, making new sugar. It'll basically convert your protein to your sugar. The name of that is called gluconeogenesis, which is basically sugar new making of, making new sugar. That's what it means. So with doing an eating plan with the adrenal, you have to make sure you have enough protein if your body is breaking down protein. If you go on a low protein diet or a vegetarian diet with adrenal, your body will have the tendency to eat up your own proteins. And that's where you see collagen loss. You'll see um, your legs get thinner, your muscles get weaker. So we always need to make sure that we have at least some protein with each meal, okay? The next thing that the adrenal uh, case needs is, or what doesn't need, is they need zero sugars. They cannot do sugar. Why? Because their body's already making too much sugar as it is. And so we got to put them in a state where there's no sugar. We've talked about that in the ketosis webinar. It's like zero sugar, a good amount of protein, and plenty and plenty of high potassium food. That's the vegetables. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I want to talk about in the problem with ketosis, um, the, the meal plan. Is, is this, you know, ketosis allows you to have a lot of fat. The problem if you're an adrenal type and your metabolism is slow is that when you check the urine, you may be in fat burning, no doubt, but the fat that you're burning is not the fat in your body. It's the fat that you're eating. It's the dietary fat. That is what we don't want to be burning necessarily in high quantities because we want to shrink your body. So with adrenal cases, they can do a modified ketosis diet, but they have to increase a lot more vegetables with potassium, keep the sugars down. But the amount of fat that they can eat is somewhere between moderate and low, okay? Not extremely low, but they can't get away with high amounts of you know, fatty things because they just need to um, be able to burn their own fat. And so that is the... the the twist on that ketosis diet. <clears throat> so I like to start out with a little more fat and then slowly decrease it until you're burning your own fat. And you will know that when you're on the scale. If you do the ketosis diet and you're purely in ketosis and you're not losing any weight, then we know you're just burning the fat that you're eating. You might not be gaining weight, but we want you to lose weight. Okay, so that's just a clarification on the adrenal eating plan. Now, the other point I want to make on is the uh, paleo diet. The paleo diet's really good, but for adrenal cases, um, I found that you can't do the fruit and the berry. And it's a little bit restrictive, but listen, you may have 20 or 30 pounds to lose in your belly, or 10 pounds of fat, or maybe five pounds. It's a different type of fat. It's not going to come off with traditional balanced diets. And I'm going to say something that kind of goes against my philosophy. And I think it doesn't really go against it, but it might a little bit. Uh, you know, I talk about get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. Um, on some of the adrenal cases, you can't have a so-called healthy diet. Or it can be healthy, but it's traditionally thought of as healthy. See, people think of healthy diets as, oh, you can do fruits and berries and whole grains. No, 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 no. The type of eating plan that you need for the adrenal would be some fat, just a little bit lower, okay? Not low fat, but between moderate and low. You need high potassium foods. You need a moderate amount of protein, not too much. And you want to make sure you have zero sugars. That's, that's the diet that will help you, but you're going to have to also pull out the stress. Now, I, I have a chart here, and I'm going to, you look at the bottom of this um, video, you'll see a link for the slides. You can kind of study this, and you can have all these slides. But here's the diet that um, I recommend for the adrenal. Now, this is the kale shake. I changed the recipe for the kale shake. I'm no longer recommending berries if you're an adrenal. But if you have a high metabolism, or, or let's say you have a male body and you're 30 years old, 
you could probably do fruit, you can do paleo, you can do higher fat, you will still lose weight. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the menopausal woman that is struggling. They need to be a little bit strict on this. So I'm going to explain what you should be eating. The kale is just a way to get the kale in your body. Um, we used to recommend putting a combination of a handful of kale in berries and water. Now I'm recommending put the kale in there, put the stevia, berry flavored liquid stevia. Okay, it'll taste like berries, it's kind of sweet, and you can drink it down as a shake if you want to get, if you want to drink your, um, your salad. Okay, for breakfast, it, you must have a protein breakfast, a protein and some fat, whether it's a little steak, some eggs, a little cheese, avocado chunks, maybe a burger patty. Here's an avocado and an egg. These are all really good breakfast foods. And if you consume the protein for breakfast, it will stabilize your blood sugars in the evening. One of the triggers for cortisol is a low blood sugar hypoglycemia. So just by, if you skip breakfast or you eat the wrong thing for breakfast, you're going to trigger cortisol in the evening. So I'm showing you what you should do to keep the cortisol level in check. For lunch, we do the big salad. We do a little bit of protein, fish, shrimp, seafood, chicken. Don't worry about taking the skin off. We're not worried about low fat, okay? For dinner, do the same thing. Do some vegetable dish with some protein. If you're not hungry, don't eat because within... 48 hours to, to one week to possibly a little longer than one week. If you do this and you're eliminating the sugars, your body will start to convert its enzymes, its machinery for burning fat. So it takes a while to get into fat burning, okay? Um, but it will burn fat and you won't be as hungry and you won't crave as much, okay? Now, as a little snack in the evening, you could do a little hummus with cucumbers or celery, a little cheese, a little bit of nuts. Don't go crazy with the nuts. I think people eat way too many nuts and too much peanut butter as a snack because it does have a little bit of carb. And then we got the celery with the peanut butter, a little cheese. And this is a keto bomb. I have these res recipes on my website. Um, but those are some things that you can do to keep it really, really simple. Um, a couple points with the keto bombs. Um, they're really delicious. They're very filling. They're very fatting. Only take them as, as needed. Um, so don't try to eat the whole thing. And that's why you want to make them in small batches so you don't have them sitting around, but they're, they don't have any sugar. So, But if you do this, you won't crave sugar. Your sugar cravings will go away very fast. Okay? So that is what you're going to be eating okay so we have the adrenal night formula and the day formula on my webinars i always give people a discount if they want to um, get the kit so i have an adrenal kit and i'm going to show you right now um let me see if i can find it right here Okay, so this is the adrenal stress kit. <clears throat> it has the adrenal day formula, pulls the stress out. This is the adrenal night formula. Take one before bed, take three during the day. Some people need six of these, and it comes with the massage tool, a book how to use this, and videos, but it's not the actual DVDs. It's online digital videos, a link that you can watch to use this. So don't look for a DVD. And this kit is. Um, uh, a certain cost on my website. Um, I give you the maximum discount from this webinar. So you get 20% off if you want to get it. Some of you already have the massage tool. Okay. So in that case, what you can do is you can, um, let me just give you another um, thing here called the adrenal kit. which is just the night formula 
and the adrenal day formula. Okay, so because if you already have the massage tool, um, you know, maybe just this is what you need right here. So I will also give you 20% off this. So what you do is you can click this button and and use and it automatically goes to the um, to the shopping cart with the coupon code already there. So 20% is the highest discount that I've ever given. I'm only giving out the webinars, so uh, I don't know how long it's going to be active for, but um, definitely take advantage for it now because it's going to be helping you um, save money and also help your adrenals. And um, what all, I also will leave you with um, coupon code. If you happen to miss the link, whatever, I have these this coupon code that you can type in to my website for the adrenal kit. The adrenal kit is just these two things right here. And then the um, the stress kit is the adrenal kit with the massage tool. Okay? And that's the code right here. And you go to drberg.com and then click shop. Enter the code in there. And I will also list the codes down below on this webinar if you happen to miss this. Um, but <clears throat> I want to thank you for watching this webinar, and I hope you enjoyed the information on the adrenal and have gotten some valuable tips to help your stress and lower your belly fat. We talked about a lot of different things and the effects of cortisol. So I want to thank you. And I hope to see you in the next webinar. Have a wonderful evening or day, and wherever you are on the planet. And I will see you in the next webinar.